You know, it's funny how it works. In fact, I'm not even sure how it works. I'd like to say I don't believe in ghosts. I'd like to, but I really can't. People I've come to know are from a star system called the Pallades. I am one of their children. From the boundaries of the universe to the depth of your soul, embark on a journey through the unknown and unexplained as we explore mysteries, magic, and miracles. Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick McNee. Today we'll investigate mysterious happenings in Hollywood and explore close contact with visitors from another world. But first, a demonstration of the mind's power. Driving a car at 60 miles an hour through a crowded parking lot is risky enough. But add another dimension. Do it completely blindfolded. How? Is it a mystery? Is it magic? <laughs> you be the judge. Maybe a little of both. The mystery of magic lies in the unexplained. By its very nature, magic challenges you to question the strange and the unknown, while at the same time denying you the ability to know the answers. Illusion baffles us, just as a good mystery does, because we don't fully understand it. We just have to accept what our eyes sees without knowing the hows or whys. And without these answers, we're left with a mystery. I've always loved magic, so I was especially delighted when asked to present an award at the International Magic Awards. The category was top mentalist, and the winner was Mr. And Will it Tremont. It's been a great pleasure to be this year's honorary chairman of To the witness magic. this most amazing feat of magic, Susan O'Leary and I asked Stella Stevens to join us. We have with us here right now the recipient of this year's award for best mentalist, Mr. Will Tremont. Will, you've been given a challenge for mentalism. Please tell us what you're planning to do. I'm going to drive a car, totally blindfolded, around Universal Studios in Florida. Hopefully we're going to reach speeds in excess of 60 miles an hour, and I'm going to use only my mental powers to guide me. Well, Will, that sounds like a challenge, but how are we going to be sure that you really can't see? It's not just a blindfold. I'll have wads of cotton and 50 cent pieces, adhesive taped across my eyes, plus I'll be wearing this black hood. Even so, as an extra precaution, we have a reporter riding with you. She is a very lovely lady with the most beautiful eyes, I may say. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be riding shotgun with Will, and I'm taking my trusty home video camera to keep him honest. And trust me, I'm going to be watching him very carefully, because this is my life. Well, let's get started. OK, right. let's get me okay. taped up. All right. So you're putting these on first. Right. Yeah. Make sure the coin is pressed into my eye socket. Okay. And press that magic or no magic, this again. is amazing. Okay. I watched closely as Susan helped Will put layer after layer over his eyes. Then she checked for any hidden devices that might help guide him in the car. Are you nervous, Susan? No, no, not at all. Because I am. You know, it's funny how this works. In fact, I'm not even sure how it works. But I can feel the center line of the road. I got him in 64. It's kind of fun, huh? Exhilarating.
Oh yeah, special waiver on my policy. Yeah. You want with your driver's license? Uh, what driver's license? Mr. Tremont on the radar, and I'm continuing to follow him out onto the road. We're very concerned for both his safety and that of the other drivers traveling around Universal Studios. I'm frankly amazed to see him negotiate turns, stop signs, and traffic signals without even coming close to another car. When we get to the main gate, do we have to pay? And if so, do you have five bucks, Sue? Sure, here you go. $35. The most unexpected things happen, that's when it gets scary. And I guess that's also what makes it, I don't know, exhilarating. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Stella. Susan, did he at any time remove the blindfold? Not one time, Patrick. He never touched it. <laughs> I mean, it was really amazing. I'm just glad I'm here to tell you all about it. Ooh. Well, I think we ought to take the blindfold off now. Ah, incredible. <laughs> well, congratulations, Will. Thank you. Magic, with its many faces, entertains, intrigues, enlightens, and bewilders. But above all, it always leaves you with a question. How? Is it a mystery? Or is it just simply magic. Mentalism is a type of magic dealing with unusual powers of the mind. These range from an amazing blindfolded drive to mind reading or telepathy, such as duplicating a drawing made by an audience member and sealed in an envelope. Scientists have studied telepathy for years to prove the existence of extrasensory perception. Recent experiments by the late Charles Norton in Princeton, New Jersey, showed positive results, but the study will probably have to be duplicated before the scientific community is convinced. The brilliance of a Hollywood star never fades with age. In the movie business, some spirits of deceased celebrities are still searching for the bright lights. From Hollywood studios to stars' homes, even the dead cannot resist being in the limelight. From the outside, these studios look like just another industrial warehouse. But there's more going on here than just movie making. On a prison set, unusual sounds, strange movements, and unexplained happenings have become almost commonplace. I can't really, you know, count the number of times that something strange has happened down here. I can just tell you that the employees do not like to be down here at night alone. Well, we had an operational manager who, uh, I don't know, he got in a fight with his wife or whatever the reason was, but he decided to stay in the corporate offices overnight. He heard some noise and he kind of woke up and, and looked and there was a lady in a green dress. I don't know, he said she looked 25, 30 years old, run through the offices. And he looked through the blinds into the corporate, off into the corporate uh, meeting room. And uh, he went in, and there was nothing. And he was, pretty, he was pretty shook up the next day. He didn't want anybody else to know about it when he came and talked to me. He was afraid what people might think of him because it sounded so, you know, so strange. Tom Mix, the famous cowboy star of the silent movies, does not rest in peace. Since his death in 1940, two families have occupied his house. The second family left over three years ago. Since then, it's remained vacant. Both families claim the house is haunted. Tom Mix was killed in an automobile accident in his 60th year. When he slammed on his brakes, his luggage, which was stowed in the back seat of the car, smashed into his head and broke his neck. He was buried in his White Ranger suit 
his white riding breeches, his handmade boots, and a diamond belt buckle that spelled out his name. The last family that lived here have told how one night, as they were getting ready to take a trip up north for the weekend, they experienced a very strange phenomenon. Dan, the husband, carried his and his wife's luggage from their bedroom down the steps to the front door. It was raining outside, so he left his suitcases and went to open the trunk of the car. On opening it, he saw that it was filled with gifts and that there was no room for their luggage. So he closed the lid, opened the back door, preparing to stow the suitcases in the rear seat. He then ran back inside, only to discover the luggage was gone. He called to his wife, Tracy, to ask if she had taken them. No, she hadn't. Together, they looked all through the house, but couldn't find their luggage anywhere. Then Tracy heard a sound from downstairs. It sounded like a door closing, so they went to investigate. The downstairs bedroom used to be a master suite connecting to the bathroom and dressing area. It was Tom Mix's bedroom. Dan and Tracy didn't use it as their bedroom because it always felt cold and damp. When they entered the room, Dan noticed that the closet door was ajar, and when Tracy opened it, there was their luggage neatly aligned. They never did find out how that luggage got there, but they learned that the night Tom Mix died, it was raining, and he was heading north for the weekend. Internationally known artist Charles Bragg lives in a home with a uniquely star-studded legacy. This is an old house, and uh... It was originally built by uh, William Randolph Hearst for uh, Marion Davies' favorite director, Robert Vignola. And uh, from what we understand, uh, he would rehearse her up here. There's a little theater downstairs with a proscenium and uh, curtains, and it's like a tiny theater. And she would come up here and rehearse with uh, Vignola, and then twice a week, William Randolph Hearst would come up here and she would put on little shows for him. I'd like to say I don't believe in ghosts. I'd like to, but I really can't. It seems to me that for so many years and so many uh, experiences by so many different people, uh, that it's not beyond the realm of possibility that there is something going on in this world and in the Hollywood Hills in particular. Well, this is my studio, and uh, it's a very important room to me. And uh, I'd worked here for a couple of months before I realized that uh, this is also where Marion Davies put on her little shows for William Randolph Hearst. And I thought it'd be a good idea to just hang curtains on it, you know, just to add a little atmosphere to an artist's studio. And it seems that that's when uh, things started to happen in this, on this platform, uh, after the curtains went up. Suddenly, our dogs started to respond. Right around 8.15 in the evening, uh, they would be sound asleep, just relaxed by the fireplace. And uh, all of a sudden, they would jump up, get very alert. And then both of them simultaneously make their way down this little passageway, sort of almost a secret little passageway down. And I just find them down there just sitting in the dark, looking straight towards the stage. After uh, watching the dogs uh, behave the way they were, uh, I didn't think too much of it. But naturally, uh, the second or third time, uh, I started thinking about it. So in the next morning, I would come down and check to see if everything's in the right place, things are in order. And uh, it's the strangest thing. The curtains were down as if they had almost been drawn at the end of a performance. They weren't completely together, but it was almost as if the performance were over for that, uh, for that time. And so I put them back up and tried to paint and forget about it, but I can't. Stories of women being impregnated by aliens 
have circulated for years. Today, we hear from people claiming to be the offspring of such encounters. It can be a traumatic experience to meet your biological parents if you've been adopted, but what if your father is an alien? This is the story Eddie Page told us. I am a genetic experiment that has evolved for the last 40 plus years. People I've come to know are from a star system called the Pallades. I am one of their children, and I am one of many children. I want people to know that I am not the only one because I have seven sisters who are identical to me. I am a, a, a sister of the seven, seven sisters of Eddie Page, the hybrid alien. I don't like the word alien. I like to call us celestial beings. From the period of 1953 to 1955, with the knowledge that the United States government received from these beings from the Pallades, there was uh, genetic experiments allowed for certain technology exchange under the understanding that this technology would be used for the benefit of all mankind. There was a list given to the United States government of the women that was selected at random to participate in these genetic experiments. My mother happened to be one of them participants. My mother wasn't supposed to have children. She had a complete hysterectomy, but about four months later, I was born. When we were born, we were sent back out west. We've been told to a base, a military-sponsored base, where these children were analyzed and kept in isolation. And then the government selected government-sponsored families to raise these kids as, as humans. I have been experiencing things all of my life, not realizing uh, what it all meant until about the last nine months, ten months. And uh, as a child, I was experiencing beings in my bedroom. What was your first encounter like? It was very traumatic to actually see something that I've been raised all my life that doesn't exist to actually see a craft land in front of me and beings come off and say they are why I'm here. I've got to know my father who is a Palladian from a planet in the star system called Treshuus. I have been a healer all my life and I've had a light that pulsates through my body uh, which has uh, had a tremendous effect on catastrophic diseases. Eddie told us about an unusual experience he had while in the Marine Corps in Vietnam. Our mission was to assassinate the premier of uh, North Vietnam. At this time, there was 12 of us that sent out in this reactionary team, and we were, uh, something went haywire, and every one of us got killed. And I remember all of a sudden, there was no existence no more. It was just like everything had stopped for me. And I remember a very bright white light. I, I don't know where it came from, but the next thing I know that I'm looking down and I'm seeing my body being restructured. I'm seeing some odd, there was like seven or eight odd looking beings. They were working on me. When Eddie was taken up on the ship, I was by his side the whole time and uh, administering my light to him, to his forehead, while they were replacing his body with the eight alien organs. And then, next thing I know, I'm found 11 days later in a, a rice paddy, and I'm picked up by the U.S. Army. Medical records and medical tests done here in the past year and a half have substantiated what I've been saying, that uh, a lot of my internal system, my heart, my blood cannot be identified. Uh, even to the existence, I have an extra vertebrae and an extra rib. Eddie and his sister Victoria report seeing the Pleiadians often. They'll always throw flares. Sometimes they'll, they'll throw as many as 20 flares down in a location, kind of a little celebration. They will, they will show, throw out streamers, which like what she says, like they look like flares. And what they are, they are electrical streamers, and they, they charge the atmosphere. And, and this is a, a way of identifying themselves. According to Eddie, the Pleiadians have been visiting our planet for thousands of years, nurturing our growth. And he says, the best is yet to come. I will tell you, probably in the year 1997, there's going to be 
one of the most beautiful announcements in the world has ever known. It's going to be the greatest event that mankind has ever known. Is there intelligence in other worlds? Well, a project called SETI, which stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, is trying to prove just that. Plans are underway to use radio antennas in Australia and Puerto Rico to scan for intelligent signals from various stars in the southern sky. The most amazing things are happening all around the world, and sometimes just down the road. I'm Patrick McNee. Join me next time for more mysteries, magic, and miracles. Mm -hmm.